Well, in Brighton now is the Green Party MP, Caroline Lucas, and here in the studio, Sir Peter Bottomley, the Conservative MP for Worthing West. Caroline Lucas, it may be within the rules, but what do you think of what these 46 MPs are doing? Well, if it's the case that some of them are making financial profits out of this arrangement, then I think that is wrong. I mean, it's clear that some of these IPSA rules are having perverse effects, and I understand why MPs have no longer been able to claim the mortgage payments, and therefore they've been forced to move out and claim rent. But if they're doing that at a profit, if they're making thousands of pounds a month profit from doing that, then I think that is, again, certainly the spirit of the rules. And I think it shows that not much has been learnt since the last expenses scandal. Well, they'll be making thousands in profit anyway because these properties are all going up in value, regardless of the balance between the rent and the mortgage costs. Well, in that case, I think we should be looking at what happens to those properties when they get sold, and we make sure that a substantial proportion of those go back to the taxpayer. We can argue about which way it's done and when that money goes back, but the bottom line is those properties were bought with the help of the taxpayer, and the taxpayer needs to see that money. Peter Bottomley, what do you make of that? Well, it's a fair argument. And first of all, this is a very stale story, because when Ipsa changed the rules, people like me said they'd be paying out more in allowances to some MPs than they were paying in mortgage. They deliberately took that decision on balance. They said it was in the public interest, and this is the result. Well, calling it a stale story, I mean, you know, is, is, is up to you, but some people will think that sounds a bit out of touch. Sorry, when did I it, mean, this when, is, this no, is no, public no, money we're talking a, about. Start. Ipsa changed the rules, and during the parliamentary debates, some of us said this will have some perverse consequences. Yeah, but what do you think about what they're doing? You know, is it within the spirit? I mean, you know, MPs are not supposed to be making money from property that was bought... With I, expenses, I, are they? I can see that argument. They had their mortgage interest paid. They didn't have the house paid for by the taxpayer. No, but they wouldn't they, be able they, to buy these properties without the well, taxpayer help, it, would they? Some would, some wouldn't. Some people have mortgages when they don't need to have them. Some desperately need them. The issue is, what's a sensible system? And I think that the report which founded IPSA said MPs should have allowances. What we're talking about here are expenses. If, for example, you said to out of London MPs, you can have an allowance of five, seven thousand pounds, ten thousand pounds a year. That is all you can well, get. Well, let's not that rewrite the rules just yet. I mean, I just want to know well, what you think of the we're principle about the what's going on. We're talking on. about the consequence of the rules, and the rules of the IPSA are the people who should be here. So they you should... think they're doing nothing wrong? No, I think IPSA have got it wrong. I do think they've You think IPSA wrong. have got it wrong, but yes. not the MPs who are... I think the M MPs were, the not, were not allowed to continue with cheaper mortgages. They had to go for more okay. expensive rentals. Caroline Lucas, what would you say to Peter Bossomley? Well, I agree that, that IPSA's decisions have led to some perverse outcomes, but I think that within that, um, MPs need to be aware of, of, of how it looks to the outside if they are making substantial profits from this arrangement. And so I think we need to go back to the drawing board to make sure that that is not the case. That's certainly not what was intended when these rules came into effect. I know some MPs at the time did warn that there could be some perverse uh, outcomes, but certainly I think that at a time when there's still so much disillusionment um, and anger from the public towards MPs, this kind of revelation is incredibly unhelpful and it absolutely needs to be sorted out. Surely the intention was that MPs would sell their second homes, as Nick Clegg did. I mean, he actually paid back to the taxpayer the profit from that home so that he, no one could say he had benefited from expenses. Shouldn't they all would... have done that? I don't want to preempt what everyone's personal circumstances were and how long they've been in a property, but ideally I would have said yes, that would have been a much clearer, cleaner way forward, and the money could have gone straight back to the taxpayer and we'd all know where we are. Peter Bossomley, do you not see that to many members of the public this looks like greed? Well, I, I can see the way it's been put and I can see how many would re respond. And to many people, the amount spent on housing in London is more than they actually earn. It's more than their household live on. I can constantly see that. That's not, I think, the prime issue. The prime issue is, do you have a sensible set of rules? And if they aren't sensible, change them. And if they do get changed, don't have the unintended but foreseeable consequences which this has had. But if Nick Clegg could see that the, the rules were open to making money, but that wouldn't look good, that would be wrong, and he acted accordingly, why can't other MPs well, take a similar principled step? I'm not here to defend every MP and what they do, and I don't know what they've done. What I can say is this. I'm going to give you a parallel. A house is an asset. I had a friend, Peter Thurnham, who, when he was out of work, bought two machine tools, built up a business, employed 150 people, and became a member of parliament. And we welcomed him because he'd actually shown what can be done. Should he, when he became an MP, have been told, you've got to sell your engineering business? 
how different is that to a house or Michael Foote's writing royalties or James Callaghan's farm or other things? And we want people... Oh, because these things were bought with expenses in part. No, that's, they, that's they, the they weren't bought with expenses. The mortgage interest may have been paid for, but they weren't actually bought because even under the old system, you couldn't have capital payments made from the House Commons expenses. No, but the interest was paid by, by expenses. That's, so that's, so that's it's a clearly it, fundamental it, it, part it of buying it is, is, is the mortgage interest. It was paid interest. because it was cheaper than paying rentals. What do you think will happen to the calibre of MPs that we're guessing? Well, leave, leave, yeah. aside, leave aside the, the, the expenses business. The rich can always be an MP. The poor can normally be an MP. The people in the middle may choose not to come in. And I think you want to have a parliament which includes all. When I got elected, the deputy director of leisure services in my London borough got paid more than I did. The third journalist on a one of the newspapers covering Parliament got paid more than I did. I didn't object to that, okay. but you put people off unless you could fill the middle. The rich and the Pe poor, fine. People in the middle need to be able to come in as well. Peter Bottomley, Caroline Lucas, thank you both very much.